This is Total Outdoor Programming. Hey everybody, this is Marty from Total Outdoor Programming. I'm gonna go over some of the things that I decide to look at when I'm picking where I'm gonna put my tree stand for deer hunting. And uh, usually I'll use the same tree stands for both bow and gun, um, but you know, in certain scenarios we'll change it. This particular scenario here is one that I'll use for both bow and gun. So the first thing that I consider when I'm thinking about setting a deer stand is basically where do I think the deer are gonna be coming from? Where do I think they're gonna be going? In this scenario here, we've got a big piece of woods off to one side. Mosquitoes are bad today. We've got a big piece of woods over on this side over here, a small piece of woods that they will sometimes get into over here, and then back here is a huge marsh area that they tend to live in a little bit. And way over on that side, is a big woods, but it's changed a little bit. It's actually got a house going in on it now. Uh, so it's not gonna be used as much, and we're gonna try and set the stand based on where these different pieces of habitat are and how we think the deer will move based on certain factors in that area. The first thing that I'm gonna consider is I don't wanna to get too close. Uh, a lot of people will find a site that has all kinds of trails and rubs and scrapes you know, all kinds of activity thickets and it's the spot that they're like instantly oh that's where I'm gonna set my stand I used to do it that way and I found over time that typically what happens is you have a great hunt for about two or three times and then all of a sudden the deer start to get wise to you you know when you're moving in in the morning before daylight they're moving out the back door uh, before long your traffic starts to slow down a lot and the next thing you know you're wondering where all the deer went the way that I combat that is I'll actually set up a little ways out from where I want to be. In this particular situation here, some of you might think that I'm crazy for bow hunting in this scenario uh, because the nearest piece of habitat is probably uh, 200 yards that way, 250 yards that way, 100 yards this way, and 200 yards that way. So I'm way out from everything. This is a patience type of hunting. It's not going to work too well if you're on public ground. Uh, but if you've got a little piece of private ground that you can hunt and you've got it to yourself, uh, this will work really nice to keep you in the action, seeing what's going on, and still have a chance of taking one without coming in and completely booting them off of the ground into the neighbor's ground. What I'm going to do today, we've got a little cottonwood set up right here. Uh, the deer tend to file past this when they're moving from one piece of woods to the other, one piece of habitat to the other. It's sitting over the top of an alfalfa field and there's corn over here that'll be harvested in about two months that they'll be eating too. So we've got food sources. There's a creek runs right through here that they water out of. There's all kinds of reasons for them to cross this point here without putting my stinky butt in the woods where they live. So the reason I'm picking this spot is because they do cross this, but they don't live here. If you go and set on top of where they live, they're not gonna live there after a few days of you being in there. Okay, and then another important consideration to think about is how you can approach the area and how you can get out of the area without spooking them. And then also keeping the wind in mind, what way that wind typically comes from and if that's going to be blowing in the direction that they're typically gonna come from. In this particular scenario here, there's a road up here that I can slip down the edge of and sneak down in. And I'll go close to that area, but that's where the house is. Um, but I don't go anywhere close to all of this habitat that's out here, the two woods and the uh, big marsh. So this allows me an easy approach in, and then even after the hunt's over, after dark, they're still out in this field or this field feeding, I can slip down after dark and make it back out to the road without having too high of a chance of spooking them. Uh, the longer you can get in and out with that, without them knowing that there's anybody in their world, the better you're gonna be. Uh, the second thing would be wind. Um, Typically in our area, we have a predominant southwest wind or something out of the west, uh, which is gonna be coming from this way, which puts the wind typically coming from the biggest woods and heading towards the road, uh, which means unless they get way out behind me out into that cornfield feeding, they're not gonna smell me. So you wanna keep wind as a major consideration too when choosing your stand site. So hopefully these tips help you. And uh, in the next video, we're gonna show you how we're gonna set the stand up in this tree, we're just using a double ladder stand so I can bring my son out and my wife and hunt together. Um, 
and so hopefully you'll be able to look over your area and see if there's a way that you can back off and still be in the action without pushing the deer out keep them on your property longer so you have a better chance of getting that buck when he does show up all right good luck and if you like this just remember to subscribe below on the button and we'll keep the videos coming for you thanks a lot